John drinks half a pint of water a day. How many pints of water will he drink in five days? Well, we know that he drinks half a pint of water each day. So I'm going to illustrate half a pint of water. We're being asked to find how many pints of water he will drink in five days. So I'm going to draw five half pints of water. But when I give my answer, I don't want to say he drinks five half pints of water. I want to say how many complete pints he drinks in five days. So if I put two half pints together, that will make one full pint. I have another two half pints to put together, and that would make another full pint. And then I'm left over with half a pint of water. What I just did was add half plus half plus half plus half plus half, which equals five halves or two and a half, as you can see on the right-hand side, if we were to show it as a mixed number. Remember, repeated addition is the same thing as multiplication. So what I'm also doing here is I'm multiplying one-half times five. I have five one-halves. To solve through multiplication, I'm going to multiply my numerator times the whole number. I'm really multiplying my numerators here. So one times five is five, so I'll put a five in my numerator. And then my denominator stays the same. I keep the two in the denominator's place. So one half times five equals five halves. And again, through the illustration, you can see why this is true. And then we have to change five halves into a proper fraction. So it becomes a mixed number, two and a half. So John will drink two and a half liters of water in five days. Now we're gonna take a look at a couple other problems to really understand how we multiply a fraction times a whole number. Here I'm asked to multiply half by eight. This time I'm going to illustrate it with cookies. So let's say that I have eight half cookies. One half times eight equals eight halves. And if you look here at the picture, you can see that I have eight halves. So that makes sense. So now I wanna show it as a whole number or mixed number. And again, I can use repeated addition or multiplication to show that. If I add two halves together, I get one whole. So if I put these two together, I get one whole cookie. If I put these two halves together, I get another whole cookie. I'll add these two together and get a third whole cookie. And finally, I'll put my last two halves together and get a fourth whole cookie. So eight halves is the same as four. Now let's think about how we solve this mathematically without illustrations. So one half times eight is the same as one times eight halves. So we're multiplying the numerators. One is in the numerator of my fraction and eight whole means that I have eight in my numerator of the whole number. One times eight halves is the same as one half times eight. Now I can multiply my numerator. One times eight equals eight, and I keep the two in my denominator's place, eight halves. And finally, I simplify or show it as a mixed number. And eight halves equals four. Let's try another one. This time we're being asked to multiply one-fourth by six. So that means that I have six one-fourths. If I combine four one-fourths, I would make one whole pizza. And I'm left over with two one-fourths. One-fourth and one-fourth equals two-fourths, which is the same as one-half. So one-fourth times six equals one and a half. We can see this through drawing illustrations, but again, let's take a look at how we would solve this mathematically. One-fourth times six equals, or is the same as, one times six fourths. And think about how I'm saying that. It might make more sense if you really think about what I'm saying or, or what that means. One times six fourths. I have six fourths here. So we're multiplying our numerators, one times six. Now I can solve by multiplying one times six, which is six, and keeping four in my denominator. So I'm going to reread through this. And again, I want you to think about what it means as I'm saying it. One fourth times six equals one times six fourths, which equals six fourths. And if you look at the picture on the left-hand side, you can see that I do have six 
fourths. Then I'm going to change this improper fraction to a mixed number. Six fourths is the same as one and two fourths, which when simplified is one and one half. Let's solve one more problem with illustrations. We're asked to multiply two thirds by four here. So I have two thirds of a pizza and we wanna multiply it by four. So it means that we have four two thirds. Now before I show you the illustration on the right, Let's focus on solving it mathematically first. Two-thirds times four. Well, two-thirds times four is the same as two times four-thirds. And again, think about that. If you look at the image on the left-hand side, there's two pieces in every pizza. And I have four pizzas. So it's two times four-thirds. Each pizza, it's broken up into thirds and each pizza has two thirds of it left. So again, we have two times four, because there's four pizzas, thirds. So we're going to multiply our numerators, two times four, which equals eight, and we have three in our denominator. And we need to change this into a mixed number because it's currently an improper fraction. Three goes into eight two times, and then I have two left over in my numerator, so I have two thirds left over. Now let's take a look at the illustration. When we multiply two thirds times four, we get two and two thirds. Now compare the image on the left with the image on the right. If you look at the image on the left, we see that we have four groups of two thirds. We have eight thirds. If you count up each piece, you're going to count eight thirds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight thirds. If I look on the right hand side, I'm going to see the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We also have eight thirds, but we've multiplied them to show what it would look like if they were all together. So two thirds times four equals two and two thirds. Okay, now you're going to solve some problems in your notebook. I'm going to do two with you, and then I want you to solve the other four in your notebook on your own, and we'll go over them later. Let's first try one-fifth times three. And make sure you're writing this in your notebook as I'm solving it. We're going to begin by multiplying our numerator. So we multiply one times three. So one-fifth times three equals, or is the same as, one times three-fifths. Now I'm going to solve. One times three is three, and we keep five in our denominator. So the answer is three-fifths. Now let's try another one. This time, three-eighths times four. Again, I'm going to multiply my numerators. So three-eighths times four is the same as three times four-eighths. And now we can solve. We'll multiply three times four which is 12, and we keep eight in the denominator. Now this is an improper fraction, so we still have another step. I have to turn it into a mixed number. Eight goes into 12 one time, and then we have four left over. So we would get one and four eighths. We're still not done though, because four and eight are both even numbers, so it can be simplified. Four and eight can both be divided by four. Four divided by four is one, eight divided by four is two. So we end up with one and a half, and that would be our final answer. So three eighths times four equals one and a half. Now these two examples should be written in your notebook and they'll stay here on the screen as well. I want you to solve the following four problems. Remember, you can go back to earlier points in the video and re-watch them. You also can refer to problems one and two here to help you work through the remaining problems.